This is Mark with laurahollowpark.net and today we're going to look at two shapes made by Homer Lachlan in the 1930s. We're continuing looking at reed shapes and we're going to begin with Century which was released in 1931 followed by the Jade Shape from 1932. So we're going to start with Century which is a square shape with little scallop corners. Uh, we'll begin by looking at some of the treatments. Uh, we have this is a rather popular treatment. This is uh, English Garden. The treatment number is C4. See that on the lid? And it has two markings on it. It has the vellum marking, which is in reference to the vellum glaze that was developed for Century. The vellum glaze went on to be used on Wells, uh, Yellowstone, and Jade. If you want to know more about vellum and other glazes, you can look at video number 8. I'll put it, uh, a link in the description for this video uh, on YouTube. So you can look at that video. And then there's the Wells Peacock marking in honor of um, William Edwin Wells. If you want to know more about that marking, you can look at video number seven. Again, I'll put that in the link in the description. Uh, but this is English Garden. In the Wells video, we talked a little bit about the uh, platinum trim being used for the first time. And we see that continuing on Century on this casserole and on this teapot. You see how the heavy uh, platinum on the uh, handle and finial also on this butter dish, this is Briar Rose, and we see heavy platinum again. Let's see how this one's marked. The Wells Peacock again. Most of these early treatments are going to have the Wells Peacock marking. It disappears sometime around 1934, so if we look at this uh, one with the uh, green bands on the verge, we have a Wells Peacock marking and a 1934 back stamp. So that's pretty late for the Wells marking. After 34, you're not going to see it that much. And again, we have the Wells Peacock marking on a 36's bowl with the gladiolus decal and platinum trim. And century, there's essentially two waves to century. So I kind of need to explain what I mean by that. When the dinnerware shape is developed, it goes through its initial stages of being modeling. They create decals for it. Then it's introduced at a show then buyers pick it up, and then it's offered for sale. Once that's all done, or actually during the process, they're on to the next shape, and the whole thing repeats again. Well, with Century, it goes through that process, and then the next shape that's developed is Jade, and what would ordinarily happen is the shape would just be pretty much forgotten. Maybe a new treatment might go on it, like a treatment might be developed for Jade, and they'll say, well, well let's go ahead and put it on Century. But for the most part, the shape would be forgotten. And that's pretty typical for most of these Homer Lachlan lines. In the case of Century, however, it did get a second life in the late 1930s. And we see a whole new set of decals, these very bold, bright decals, probably inspired by the introduction of Fiesta and bold, bright colors. We see a lot of Mexican themes. We've got Conchita, uh, Mexicana, Hacienda. There's Mexicana with blue stripe. There's Chinese porcelains, and this decal is called Splash. So we have this first wave from the early 1930s with all these nice pastel-colored flowers and platinum trim and such, and then we have this, these very bold decals with bright colors. Another difference you'll notice with these are the treatment numbers. Of course, we said this was C4 on English Garden, but by the time you get to these late 1930s, let's look at this plate. Here we have the, the name as well, Chinese Porcelain's Treatment Number C256, and this is dated 1940, so the numbers increase into the 200s. So it's pretty unique to Century. I mean, you do sort of see it with other shapes like, let's say, Rhythm, where treatments are added to Rhythm as Rhythm goes on in the 1950s, but Rhythm is a plain round shape, so it, it was pretty common to put treatments on Rhythm. But Century, this is rather unusual to have these two different time frames, early 30s and late 30s. You generally will not see this with other shapes. Maybe Yellowstone to a certain extent, but not to the degree of Century. Um, in a video, we talked about trade sizes. That was number six. And here we have a 24s jug, but now it has a lid. Wells, Century Jade, and Virginia Rose all have 24s jugs with these lids. Uh, it becomes a battered jug. So you can have the open jug, which is a 24's jug. Put the lid on it, now you have a lidded 24's jug or a battered jug. You also have the little syrup jug, which would be a 42's in trade size. 
And we've got a cr uh, sugar bowl here with black trim. And it has a Wells Peacock stamp. Instead of the decal, it actually has a platinum stamp. Um, Century had a cake plate. It's one of the last lines to have a cake plate. Sometimes this is called a, a tray or a batter tray because it's usually in a batter set sometimes. But technically it is called a cake plate. And since we're talking about assortments, let's go ahead and look at these. Well, let's see. These are copies of the initial assortments for both Jade and Century. They are essentially the same. The only difference is Century calls for an egg cup, which comes from the well shape. But one thing I noticed in preparing for this video, uh, it has coffee cups and saucers, 80 cups and saucers, those are demi tasse cups and saucers, and tea cups and saucers. And by the same token, Jade has coffee cups and saucers, demi tasse cups and saucers, and teacups and saucers. And I wanted to point that out because in the Wells video I lined up those three. I had the Wells coffee cup and saucer, um, the teacup and saucer, and demi tasse cup and saucer, and I said Wells was the last shape to have all three. Well it turns out it's actually Century and Jade. Uh, I didn't realize that until getting ready for this video, so if you have the coffee cup and saucer for either Century or Jade I'd like to see it because I've never actually seen those before. Um, so I just wanted to point that out as a correction. Uh, let's see, what else? Let's go on to Jade. Because when Jade was made in 1931, it was developed in 31, released in 32, it too had a special glaze, and it was Claire de Lune. Let me back up so you can see Jade. On the left you see the Claire de Lune glaze, and on the right you see the vellum glaze, because Jade used both of them. But initially it was Claire de Lune, and Claire de Lune has a, like a greenish blue cast to it. I don't know if it's going to show up in the video or not. Let's uh, look at this saucer and this sentry plate that is in vellum. You should be able to see the difference there. This is vellum and this is Claire de Lune. When I did the video number eight on glazes, I did not uh, include Claire de Lune as a decorated glaze uh, example simply because it's only used on jade. It's not used on any other shape. And unfortunately it was not a success. Um, in fact, the, the whole jade shape was not a success because after they start using Claire de Lune, they went back to Century's vellum and applied it to the jade shape. And it just didn't work. Um, this shape only runs about two years. It has one of the shortest production lifespans of, of any Homer Lachlan shape. Maybe Niagara would be shorter, I'm not sure. If, if Jade is not first, then it's a very close second. Uh, so we see a lot of common pa patterns here. We've got matinee medallion, that's on several shapes. We've got the Spanish door. Um, this treatment actually originated on the Knoll shape, so it's odd to see it on Jade. Jade has a little bit of a more formal look than Century. In fact, if we, uh, let's put two creamers side by side. We've got Century on the left and Jade on the right. Uh, Jade does not have the little scallop corners in its flatware. Actually, Jade actually started out as a triangle shape. That was initially what Reed wanted to do as a triangle shape and then they changed it into a more square shape. It has sort of rounded edges. One piece of Jade that's significant is the butter dish. And we have a Jade shaped butter dish here. This has pattern JJ59, which is a Virginia Rose pattern. This butter dish is dated 19, let's see, 43. The jade butter dish uh, was the first square butter dish, or rectangle butter dish. Every butter dish that came before jade was a round one. In fact, going back to century, we have a round example here. Even though the jade shape was discontinued very early, the butter dish continued. It, it was um, a pickup piece. So a lot of the decal lines that needed a butter dish would pick up this piece. And it goes all the way into the 1950s. In fact, um, a new butter dish is not created until Orbit, which would be 1962-1963 in that, that, that era. And we'll get to that much later. So that's a little bit about the jade shape. Markings. Uh, a lot of it will have peacock markings as well. Again, the Wells Peacock. Uh, this has a date code. It's actually 1933. Let's look at this sauce boat. 1933. You're, you're going to be hard-pressed to find anything from 34. 
1933 on this Baker. Again, we're we see the heavy platinum used, just as we did on Wells and Century, or gold in this case. Let's look at the marking on the casserole. And we have a Wells gold stamp with 18 karat gold, made in the USA. So that Wells marking continues on to Jade. You will find it on Virginia Rose, which is going to be coming up in the next video. Um, but very, very rarely on Virginia Rose, mainly Wells, Century, and Jade. So the only other thing to talk about are the bakers. The bakers and the platters for Century. So I'm going to move things around from here for a minute. Move this here. Okay. A lot of the bakers and platters you'll notice have a square well to them. I'm sorry, a rectangle because they're oblong. And if you flip them over, these both have treatment numbers too, C80 and C125, you have this flat surface. And the problem with that is that you get this wobble effect. That one's actually pretty good. This one has a pretty severe wobble to it. Um, so they corrected that by adding a foot on the bottom. So you have this well-defined foot. Um, again, here's, here's the flat version, the flat bottom version, and here's the one with the foot. And this was made as, a, as an oval, and as the shape continues, instead of having this rectangular well, you now have an oval well. So you're going to notice a difference uh, with your platters and your bakers, where some have a square well or a rectangle well, and some are oval. Now, with platters, uh, as I said, you will notice this with platters as well, you're going to see some in the transitional stages where they are actually flat on the bottom as, too, bottom as well. And then that foot will be added for stabilization. So again, this has a slight, actually you can see, probably see it. Maybe you can't see it that well. I can feel it. It's, it's pretty warped. And that was a problem with a lot of these oblong pieces. Here's a piece of century with the, uh, the oval, and so it has the well-defined foot for stabilization. You will find Riviera, um, that's solid colored century, with both a rectangular well and an oval well. And same with the platters in Riviera, too. You have a wide variety of platters because of the, the added foot. We will be getting to Riviera um, later on after we cover Fiesta. I don't want to get into Riviera right now, but Riviera is essentially uh, the century shape uh, with colored glazes. So I think that's going to be it for today. Uh, again, the century shape from 1931, rather successful line throughout the whole 30s and into the 1940s, and the jade shape, a not so successful shape from 32, 33, 34. Um, that's going to be it for today.